<laughs> oh my gosh, okay, so I ordered the large. I did not order this size. Hey there everyone, today is another magical day at the one, the only, the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. Epcot loves sharing in these days with you. It's another food and wine festival day. Also, I'm gonna do a few tours of different areas around Epcot. So we're gonna do a few more of those country tours by popular request. We did Morocco the other day, it was great. We're gonna dive a little bit deeper into some of the other countries. Now, when I was thinking about which country to go to today, I was thinking to myself, okay, what's it gonna be? One of these, one of these, pick, 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 one of those, and just decided, you know what? Let's Let's go around the world. We're gonna take it slow, so maybe one country, maybe two today, and we're gonna go really in depth, because I know you wanna see those countries, so let's dive in. First up, as you make your way around World Showcase, and I know some friends like to go that way, some friends like to go that way, we're gonna go the Mexico way today and start with it. Now, as we make our way towards Mexico, you can see the Mexico kiosk here for the Food and Wine Festival, located right outside of Mexico. Not. Uh, always the case, but during the festival time, this is usually where it's located. As you walk this way, you can see Mexico Pavilion right there, gotta love it. We walk across this bridge. The theming starts right away with that music and the attention to detail, including on the bridge. You can see kind of that theme, the, the color. I feel like the color of the stone really adds to it a lot, kind of, kind of pointing you towards Mexico. Very nice. Which way to look first, left or right? Let's go right first. La Cantina is the quick service location here in Mexico and serves some amazing nachos. They have a lot of delicious options, but my favorite are those nachos. In my opinion, one of the best on property with the jalapenos on there. I love those. You cannot go wrong here with those nachos. Yum. Now, I just learned that they do not have the Mexican slaw right now and in the foreseeable future, but apparently they, they may get it back. They have the black beans and rice for now, for those who love the Mexican slaw. They also have the... Uh, Wow, that's the tacos de pollo. You can see with the uh, chicken. I really gotta try more from here, I'm telling you. They also have margaritas on the rocks right there. You see a lot of different options available too, including the blood orange one. A lot of outdoor seating here at this location. A little fun tip, if you are happen to be eating right around the time of the fireworks, get a spot with a great view because those fireworks are incredible from here. You can see there's a ton of seating available. I love it. The views though, I mean, just look at these views. Y you can't beat that, I'm telling you. The friendship boat making its way around right over there and you can see all the other countries around World Showcase just by standing in this outdoor seating area. Great music playing up above and the fans are usually spinning away. Now when there are a lot of people eating here, usually you get a few feathered friends joining you and you can see they ask you not to feed them because we don't want to bother their health. So the feathered friends are staying near the water at the moment, but when more people are here, they're they're usually hanging around. Speaking of feathered friends, take a look who's hanging out right here on this fence. Don't want to bother them, but you can see they're sitting right there on the fence, just hanging out, looking at all of us, wondering where those nachos are. I should note if you have larger parties, these chairs do not move. They are bolted to the floor. That's uh, one thing to kind of look out for. If you have parties larger than uh, four, they want to take up two of those tables just so you have room for everybody. As we make our way across from La Cantina San Angel, we see this new margarita stand. The theming for the margarita stand, super, super nice. You can see the Aztec feel to it as you walk around. We're actually gonna walk through the line here. Not many people in line, so we got time to look at that menu real quick. So many delicious options, but that guacamole, it's calling my name. They have margaritas, signature ones, frozen margaritas, a lot of food, sides, that guacamole side. See that right there? Top with mango and pumpkin seeds with tortilla chips. We might have to try that in the future, that looks delicious. A little closer look at the Mexican slash Aztec feel that you're getting from the uh, the stand here. I really like it, right? These right down here, you see how all this is done? Really nice. The theming follows all the way around towards this side of the stand as well. Love it, absolutely love that theming. Now, as we make our way outside of the margarita stand, to our left is the main pavilion right here. Love it. The Aztec Temple marks the start of the amazing Mexico Pavilion. Let's walk up there. I should note stroller parking is outside and you can get in with wheelchairs going around the outside. Kind of one more, one more around. There's a wheelchair entrance as well. Now, before we actually step inside, 
wanna show you the view right from over here. Once you make your way up to this platform, it's kind of some quiet spots all around where you can sit back, relax, maybe uh, a drink right here as you enjoy a view of this part of World Showcase. Now you can see the theme for the temple follows all the way around. It's not just the front there, which I really, really like. You can find small details around the outside as well. Take a look. I mean, that, that's, that's a small detail that you miss, I'm telling you. Something that I don't recognize from the past, these tables right here for, I'm guessing, the Food and Wine Festival. You can see they're all spaced down here. Some of them have shade to our left there, and a lot of them have these great views of the Mexico Pavilion area. Now let's make our way inside the Mexico Pavilion, and you'll see right off the bat, it features Coco, remember me. Theming inside is all about Coco. There is more time than life. Good to know. It's just, you know, some things that we can uh, remember, saying hello to those, maybe even after their final goodbyes. You know, I like to think about the time we have now, which is great too, but you can see it's all Coco themed. They go into a bit of history in terms of the holiday. You can see a lot of, there's actually Mayan, a lot of Mayan uh, sculptures here and artifacts from the past. Check out the flying flute player. That that is so cool. I hadn't seen that one before. Right next to the display case, we can see Dia de Muertas and what days it does take place. The first is the day prior, All Saints Day, and then you've got All Souls Day on the second. It's not the same as Halloween. It's, it's very different, but it's uh, good to know those days. As we take a wider look here inside the entrance of the pavilion, you can see those two, uh, the bride and groom skeletons right over there. I'm looping our way back around. We're gonna take a look at some of these uh, cases here. Now this is a graveyard scene inspired by Disney's Coco. You can see uh, the lights are changing in there. See, now it's the candles that are lit with the stars. See, and then, oh, looks just like that. We can see the, uh, the uh, Dia de Muertes, the day of the, uh, day of the Dead there, with the uh, grandparents and family members who are no longer around, kind of sharing in the day with family. Now you can see it's well lit, and you can see everything inside the display case, so it, uh, it changes as you look at it. These skulls are actually known as sugar skulls. They're handcrafted from Mexico. Great to see a lot of different styles there. So what the, uh, his eyes are like, what do you call it, sunbursts kind of? Looks great. Now, before we go deeper into the pavilion there, we're gonna take a look over here. You can see one display case to our right, which has uh, the sugar skulls and talks about how they make those sugar skulls and craft them to kind of go from this to the final product and uh, kind of a very large, intricate one right on top there. Now, these displays usually allow you to create your own skull. Not happening today, but in the future, they'll come back. Here's a dog and cat behind the bride and groom there. He's he's made of bones, holding a bone. Okay, I like it. Now, I've always been so fascinated by this artwork that you can see all around the Mexico Pavilion, where it's like paper cutouts, but in a really intricate design. You can see the skull kind of on the bike right there with uh, either flowers on his head or a lot of hair, one of the two. By this exit right here, you can learn more about those artists, the Sugar Skull artists, Rob O, and several others who make all the amazing art that we see here. Now this display case right here from Coco is actually a welcome home, that's what it's called. And in the days leading to Dea de Muertes, families and friends gather to construct artful art altars called Afredas, I believe that's how you pronounce that, where you can see photos of family and friends, not around anymore, but we're celebrating, we're celebrating together. You can see this one changes as time goes by with the uh, candles coming on there. That's super, super interesting to see. And then a few moments later, it'll all turn back on. Candles going off now and the lights are coming back on. So it uh, it changes as you stand here. Skeletons are a big part of Dia de Muertes. You can see skeletons at play where you got a lot of different uh, skeleton styles here. Even a puzzle. See the standing puzzle right there where you can create your own Wow, that's very, very unique. Oh my gosh. Now this display case goes into the fancy woman. Believe it or not, that is what she is called. And she has a very interesting message kind of talking about how we are all the same. We are all the same. I really like that. that that's a, a great way to look at it. We're all the same. We're all human beings. We're on this journey together just looking to smile. And she's smiling too. That's, I like that. Now let's make our way into the plaza known as Plaza de los Amigos. Plaza of the Friends, I believe, is the, is the translation there. You gotta work on my Spanish. Let's make our way to the right. You can see we're actually only entering in one direction today. The theming inside the Mexico Pavilion, in my opinion, is one of the best. Look up above. It kind of shows the night sky, lights up above and the buildings. You know, those buildings have so many details to them, even the plants. See the plants right there with the planters, lights flickering. 
Wow. As we take a wider look here, you can see there are some artists actually at work right below us here. Wow, we're gonna take a closer look in a minute. The fountain right there with some guests sitting back and relaxing. A lot of areas to shop, and we did more shopping in a previous video. The attraction, Grand Fiesta Tour at the back over there. And then you've got different shops on the left and right. More glass shops and jewelry shop over there. And there's a, a, a restaurant in the back, San and Angel Inn, Angel Inn. And another shop over here. And then you've got a bar or a lounge right to your right. La Cava de Tequila is the name of the lounge. It's super popular, and to not have a line here is actually uncommon. So it's great to see. Lots of shopping all around the Mexico Pavilion. Got to enjoy it. Let's take a look at some of these artists on our left. This is truly an amazing display here of handcrafted creatures. They're so intricate, and they do ask for you to ask for assistance and not handle any of them, so we're not going to touch a single one. You can see amazingly detailed in so many ways. Prices do vary quite a bit. I'm seeing a lot of them about about $150 for the larger ones, $120 for that octopus right back there, and I'm sure the smaller ones are less. They're called Oaxican wood carvings. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> well, we have to ask to find out, but there are so many of them in all sorts of different designs. Your favorite animal, I bet you they have it. Now across the way from those little sculptures right there, you can see this fountain where you can sit around it, but there are those markings where you cannot sit. And then right across the way over here, we've got the Kid Cot Fun Stop, and this cast member who We'll be right back in a moment. Oh, there she is. But uh, she, they actually have those little packets, so they give you them, and the passports sit right here. You can grab them and go from country to country, getting those stickers and stamps. Now, as we make our way through the shops here in Mexico, we can see tons of artwork here. Most of it very authentic from Mexico. Some of them actually handcrafted, like these dolls and sugar skulls. La Cava del Tequila right here, open at 11 a.m. Lots of uh, space in there, and very, very popular bar. As you make our way in here, you can see the authentic feel all throughout. Look at the wall right there. I love the artwork. That's spectacular. It goes all the way down the wall here and you have these seats right here where you can sit back and relax with your drink in hand. You can see the wall also features some tools they use for harvesting different plants around Mexico. Looping around here, you can see it's got a nice feel to it overall. Kind of dimmer lights, which I do like here. This setting, it's perfect for it. Lots of different drink items here. I know it's an extremely popular one, so seeing it with these low crowds is super uncommon. Making our way outside of the lounge now, we're going to turn around here. You can see guest telephones, probably not too popular back there. Some shopping on the left and right, and then we get the, to the San Angel Inn restaurant. The San Angel Inn restaurant has some amazing theming and follows cues from Disneyland's Blue Bayou, where you sit at these tables right here, and you can watch the boats go by from the Grand Fiesta Tour. It has been so long since we've eaten here together. we got to give it another try. No doubt about it. San Angel Inn has a a lot of delicious looking items on their lunch menu here, including the uh, tacos and salad and enchiladas. Wow. To the right of the restaurant, you'll find the Grand Fiesta Tour featuring the three caballeros, including Donald Duck. As you make your way in those boats, we've done it so many times and I love it. You can see the temple right there and the volcano smoking away. Right next to the Grand Fiesta Tour, you can find this really nice crystal shop right here where they're actually making the glass right in front of us. Let's go take a closer look. Like several of the other glass works around Walt Disney World, you can find some amazing items in here. Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Daisy, Goofy, Chip and Dale, Tinkerbell, so many others. So many others. There's no lack of amazing sculptures here inside this glass shop. Wow. There's Genie's lamp back there. I love that. Jiminy Cricket right there on top. And uh, is that a snowman? Looks like a snowman. Or uh Something holding onto the lamppost there. That's great back there. We can watch the very talented artist Jason at work. He's actually making this Remy right there for the Food and Wine Festival. That's an amazing one. It's so great to see them here working on these incredible pieces of artwork. And you can see you've got different tools right there and different sized glasses that you can use to make those amazing pieces of art. Learning about this very special carousel right here. It moves around. That's amazing. $195. Apparently the master glass maker can make two of these a day. Are you, are you kidding? <laughs> it's amazing artistry. I could walk around this store all day looking at the different amazing handcrafted glass sculptures and artwork all around. It's incredible. It's <laughs> You always see something new. I love those very special dragons up there. I mean, some of them are even holding things. Do, do you see this one with the <laughs> skull in hand? <laughs> Wow, okay, that's that's super amazing. Look at the frosted glass octopus right there. That is amazing. I love it. Made by Jerry, the glass blower there. And then you have more of the um, 
I don't know, how would you describe that one? More like a pearly look. So pearly look versus the frosted look. Which one do you prefer? I, I kind of prefer the frosted look, and then you got the clear one right there. Wow. That's amazing. I like the frosted. Something about that's just like grabbing my attention. For those newlyweds, you can get the wedding rings kind of interlocked there. Imagine that being one piece of glass. Unbelievable. It's $150 for that one. And you go down here, you can see more of the wedding ones all around, including Cinderella and Prince Charming. Right there. What I find incredible is how they can have these really small pieces of glass, like little little balls of glass, to make up an amazing sculpture like this. Here's the Jeweled series here. I feel like I've seen several of these before, but I love the Magician Mickey back there. See him? <laughs> That's amazing. That's the Jeweled series though, so a little bit more expensive for those. That one's $895, because it has those uh, amazing jewels in them. Now for all the princesses in our Disney family, the tiaras are extremely popular. A lot of those I'm seeing $50 for some. Some of them are $80, a lot of amazing looking tiaras here. Now right next to the amazing glass door featuring the Rebus Brothers, of course, we've got this other store right here. It's closed at the moment, fine jewelry store, but right outside of the store where you can find amazing jewelry, you've got these small uh, parakeets, small parrots, small birds in the uh, kind of bird swing, $12.99. They look like they're handcrafted. The feel inside the Mexico Pavilion is phenomenal. You really feel like you've been immersed in the culture and history of Mexico. One of the biggest benefits and advantages inside this building is the fact that it's inside a building. So if it's storming outside, raining outside, it's a great place to stop by. Great deeper dive inside of this amazing pavilion. Now let's continue outside, there's more to see. Just as we stepped outside here, I noticed there are some horses coming down the way. Oh my gosh, they're pulling a whole large cart right there. That looks amazing. Look at all the princesses right there. Hi there. Guys, I'm gonna see you. No way. I love it, that's great. You can see a big crowd following them there. But that is a spectacular car carriage going around World Showcase with the princesses in there. Now across the way from the Mexico Pavilion, we can find La Hagienda, I believe that's how you pronounce it, which is one of the table service restaurants here inside of Mexico. They've got some delicious looking items here. Of course, the guacamole, gotta love those tacos. And they've got the uh, kids items there as well. You've got uh, cheese quesadilla, chicken tenders, and more. I have to admit, it's been so many years since we've been in here. So many years. We'll come back, we will, I promise, but not today. Now I do wanna show you the disability access to the Mexico Pavilion right there, right up this ramp, can't miss it. And then to the left-hand side, you'll find this little Aztec or perhaps Mayan sculpture over here. And this is actually where Donald meets from time to time. It's an awesome photo opportunity because usually Donald will wear his sombrero here for this photo. Really like it. Across the way, we can find the Ring Carvers kiosk. Let's take a closer look. Here at Ring Carvers, you can find a lot of different carvings made of either solid brass or your solid sterling silver. Have all sorts of very special, maybe names on there. I think you can request a lot of different names. Maybe there's the one that says Michael, maybe Mike, kind of a small version to fit on the ring, so it's a little bit larger. A lot of great options available to you. Customized, wow. Solid 14 gold rings as well. Uh, their prices plus a dollar per letter, design three dollars and up. Wow. Next to ring carvers here, we can find a small shop which is usually open during most days. You can find some uh, very special items right there from the Mexico Pavilion. And next to it, this outdoor area right now used for tables for the Food and Wine Festival is where the mariachi band may play throughout the day. From time to time, you'll also find a very special dancing skeleton here from Coco, right by this area where, where the mariachi band plays here in Mexico. I haven't caught it yet. I still have not caught it, but one day we will. In-depth tour of Mexico. Now on to the next one, Norway. Let's do it. As you make your way into the Norway Pavilion, we're gonna turn left first and see the newest addition to this pavilion. As you make your way over here to our left-hand side, you'll find the Royal Summer Hoos. This is where you will meet Anna and Elsa. Sometimes there's even Olaf in there. Sometimes, every so often, it's, it's Anna and Elsa in there. Not meeting today, but other days they'll be meeting there. As we look around here, you can see, look at these details right here. This is actually not a building we walk into. It's part of the meet and greet, but I love the attention to detail, the grass all over, the intricate door details. Look at that. That's amazing. The lights follow the theme. Even the fence here follows that theme as you make your way around. And it almost looks like you can walk up that small stone walkway right up there. See that over there? Again, the attention to detail is just outstanding. Lots of areas to sit back and relax over here, including on this bench to our left. And this is actually where you depart, where you leave that special meet and greet, the Wandering Reindeer. It's a gift shop. Closed at the moment, but this is how you exit. And on other days, you could also 
go in there to look for some gifts. As we continue our way around, you can see the restrooms here in Norway, the back area, outside seating area, that special pastry shop, we'll get to that one, and then more of that uh, the Viking temple out front. Now you can make your way to the pastry shop by walking through here, but we're not going to, we're gonna go around. A little bit of stroller parking outside the Royal Summer Hoose right there, and as we turn around over here, take a look at this very special Viking temple. We're gonna walk in there in just a moment. You can see there's very special artwork on the outside of it. First, there's this uh, woman kind of running, running through the field. For those Marvel fans or those just loving mythology, take a look at that one. Odin and Thor flag in front of the gods of the Vikings. Let's actually walk in there. Before we walk in, take a look at that intricate door. Look at the outside of it. I mean, the attention to detail, I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again, is outstanding. It's just, it's so amazing. Walking in here, you can see it's a very unique location. Inside, we learn more about those Vikings and some of their mythology. I believe it's Norse mythology. You can find Loki and Thor and several others carved into this tree. We'll take a closer look in a moment. Let's first learn about the uh, mythology of Odin and Thor. Similar to Zeus for the Greeks, Odin was the ruler of the gods. You can see his horn right there. Then we've got Thor with his mighty... Is that, is that, that's not, no, that's, that's a small hammer. Okay, we're looking for Miomir. It, it's around here. <laughs> mighty hammer. Giant demon, Ooh. Who sweat created ogres and giants. Listening to some of the tales of the Vikings, and I found Miomir. I, I found him. Hey, Thor. Now, the Vikings believed in the nine worlds. We know that as the nine realms from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, where you can see Asgard on top. And then we've got Midgard right there in the middle. Wow. Loki and the mistletoe, where you learn about the god of mischief. Ooh, doing all sorts of mischiefy things. And in the movie, it's portrayed as more of a, a villain in, in many ways. Learning about Freya here, the greatest goddess. She was actually very, very powerful. And when she cried upon Midgard or the earth, she actually cried gold and tears would turn into gold. Very interesting to learn about this mythology. Now in the center of the room right here, you can see this very large tree. There's Freya over there. Here's Thor. Good to see him with Mjolnir. There's Odin right over there. And on the other side, the, the trickster god. We, we gotta hey, watch this. But Loki, I'm watching you. Now as we exit the temple, we can see the flag for Freya and Loki right there. And then outside, I'm not sure who that is. Perhaps it's just a warrior right there introducing us to the gods of the Vikings. Great to see. So you can go inside that temple, something that I know it's, it's tough to find sometimes. But as we make our way around here, we can see more of the Norway Pavilion. Right next to the gods of the Vikings buildings, we can see Kringla, which is their small bakery right here, the one I was showing you the outside seating area for. Closed at the moment, but they've got some delicious pastries in there. Looking in the window here, I don't see any pastries out and about as we'd expect, but they'll be open again one day. Next to Kringla with that giant pretzel on top, you can see that outdoor seating area. You can actually make your way to it from this side or the other side, as we saw before. Lots of areas. Sit back and relax. Enjoy some delicious pastry when it's open. Now, on the other side of Kringle, you can see Akshers right here, which is actually a very special dining experience. But for now, it's a relaxation station. Let's check it out real quick. We're here. Let's experience it. As we make our way into Akshers here, you can see it's totally been transformed where all these tables are being used as relaxation stations. So you can sit back, relax, and take your mask off in here. The AC in here is is really, really great. I would say the one at Storybook Circus is likely more intense AC, but it's really nice to get out of the sun a little bit, sit back and relax in here. It's been a really long time since we've eaten inside this restaurant. We'll come back, we'll, we will come back. It actually has the princesses coming through during normal operating times. But till then, we'll just sit back, relax, and wait for them. After sitting back and relaxing inside Akashur's here, we're gonna make our way, I'm gonna look at some of those details as we make our way out. You can see the theming inside Akashur's really has that grand look to it. Look at the archways here. It looks like they're made of stone. And you can see the colors change from room to room here. Even got those very special banners right up above. Chandelier kind of fits this setting perfectly with the wood up above and the tables also. Wow. Well, as we make our way over here, you can see where the buffet was and will be again again in the future, no doubt about it. All right, making our way out of Akershurs now, let's see what else is in Norway. Next to Akershurs, we have one of the most popular attractions at Walt Disney World, Frozen Ever After. It looks like a long line, I know, but believe it or not, this is only listed as 20 minutes. Wow, now next to it, we've got these very interesting stores right here. Look at the theming out there. You can even see a horse right up there. Great stores here. We're actually gonna make our way inside and take a look around. We can see the waterfall still here right by Frozen Ever After. It originally played a different purpose you may recall for the attraction that used to be here. You may recall when it used to be Maelstrom, there was a boat that would stick out at the back of this waterfall right here. Not anymore, it's closed up. 
but it still looks great here. Okay, inside we go. As we make our way in, you can see our favorite troll friend is hanging out at the back just waiting to say hi. He's been here since I was a kid and I love seeing him. Great spot to take a photo. Now all around the shopping area of the Norway Pavilion, you can find some very interesting attire. I'm telling you, you could look all over and not find attire quite like this. The Norwegian flag kind of tied in with this very interesting looking sweater. Different brands from all over. You got shirts and hats with uh, Norway on them and rain jackets, of course. Heli Hansen is a very, very popular brand here in the Norway Pavilion. You can see very uh, brightly colored jackets there. I would imagine for kind of wilderness exploring, just in case for safety, you've got those colors. Now this store is phenomenal to look through, but it also serves as the exit to Frozen Ever After. And because of that, you can find some amazing frozen items inside. Different plushes with Olaf on there, Anna and Elsa all around. Then you've got this uh, kind of the scent in the bottle. Wow, super cool. They have these great jackets on the left and right there, along with the Funko Pops, Anna and Elsa, a lot of different ones. You can see Frozen 2, Frozen, uh, and the original Frozen right there. Wow, Kristoff. Wow, he's, he's got a spot right there. On the right-hand side of Fjording here, which is the name of this store, you can see so many different Anna and Elsa items, whether it's a dull tiara dress or a frozen power. Right there, little power wrist shooters, ice shooters right there. <laughs> so they've got everything for Frozen. My gosh, they have everything you could ever want from Frozen inside the Fjordings here. I'm telling you, they're, they're, I don't think there's anything that you could want that's not here frozen. Of course, when you try on those dresses, you want to see how you look. There we are. Look at all the reindeer here. This is great to see kind of the baby reindeer in the little uh, pouch right there. Baby Sven. Then you got kind of smaller version of adult Sven. You've got sleeping Sven as well. So many Sven. Now these book play sets are so smart. You can put it away as a book right there or you can play with it just like that. I'm telling you, th these are just genius, you know, for the airport or maybe in a car on a car ride. I can tell you, super, super smart. Now from the Disney show, case collection. I do not think I've seen these before. From Frozen 2, we've got the Anna and Elsa here. Wow, that is uh, super, super cool. They've also got these very special snow globes right there. You can shake them up, and I think it's I think it's like leaves. I don't think it's snow when you when you shake these up, but very cool to see. These are $69.99. That's a great shirt right there. Raised by trolls. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> very popular inside the Norway Pavilion. You've got the male and female version of these very cool Viking helmets. I can see one, $17.99. Cool section over here. Beer Stein's right there. It kind of has that indent where you can see it looks like, not sure who that is, possibly Thor holding an axe. I'm not 100% sure. Over there, you kind of move this way. Viking Epcot World Showcase. Love that jacket. And you've got the Norway Pavilion with that horn. <laughs> That's great. You've also got these very special Norwegian ears. That is incredible with the horns on both sides. I have a feeling these are going to be super popular. They've also got these hats right here, along with the jackets right below. These are awesome. I have never seen these before. See that jacket right there? Kind of the, uh, the different fabric on the outside makes the sleeve up. That is so cool. Always super popular, these helmets and shields for your younger Vikings in your traveling party, along with axes and swords, all safe to play with. A lot of great trolls right here, kind of reminiscent of Maelstrom in the past. I'm getting a lot of uh, memories here. <laughs> from fast with those trolls there. You will not pass us. Great sign, beware of the trolls. And another mug up there. <laughs> see, you see that? I'm trying not to, I don't wanna to touch them. Don't feed the troll. Inside Fjording, you can find some really nice perfume. And my mom's favorite perfume of all time, Layla, inside of the Norway Pavilion. She loves it, absolutely love it. I got some for her birthday and another actually friend got her some. Ah, it's, it is really nice smell, no doubt about it. I think these are some of my favorite products inside Norway right here. You've got the Norway with Epcot World Showcase Pavilion right there with Mickey. I mean, that's, come on, come on, that's great. I love when they combine Mickey and the Norwegian flag. That's, that is, see that, look at that. See the mug right there. You can see both sides from this view here. We've also got Minnie right here dressed up for her Norway adventure. And you've got these longer sleeve shirts over there up above $39.99 for that Norway Epcot World Showcase shirt. There's the large bottle right there for mom, for mom. She loves it. It's not an everyday thing, but for mom, something special, something extra special. I know she's gonna love it. By the way, 30% annual pass discount does apply. It does. 
Now's the time. That's an in-depth look at Norway. I gotta love them. Love all those details. We're gonna continue around now a little bit more of a quicker pace, but I love it. I love diving into those details. We'll be back for more of an in-depth tour of China and beyond in the future. It's time for lunch now, and I'm thinking about the Food and Wine Festival. We're gonna try something brand new that we have never tried before. I'm a big fan of that Piri Piri shrimp here at the, uh, the Africa kiosk, but we've had it before. Something we have never tried before. I'm walking by Italy now, and I know it's not part of the Food and Wine Festival, but I just, I just want to see what's going on with Vienna Poli. I, I am such a fan of that pizza. My opinion, number one pizza at Walt Disney World. Let's just go check it out. I just walked by that cart right there. They have a tiramisu popsicle. Okay, we, we're we not going to have one. Maybe. I, I That just, it looked too good. I don't know. I'm tempted. The window is not open as we'd expect, but table, you know, they have some availability here. Maybe I, I probably won't get a table. I just want to I want to see. Just walked up and they have walk-up availability inside the restaurant. So I'm, I'm super tempted. I'm so tempted. I want to get do food and wine food, but this is also, I'm so split. I don't know what to do. I think I know how I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to look at the menus here on the app and decide if there's anything else that I really, really want right now from the food and wine festival. But because remember, not all the kiosks are open right now, but if there isn't, that really catches my attention right now. I think, uh, we're gonna go for Via Napoli. I'm telling you, it is extremely difficult to resist Via Napoli. Best pizza on property by leaps and bounds. Leaps and bounds, not even kidding. The seafood fisherman's pie from Ireland at the Festival of Favorites and World Showplace is something that I really do wanna try. But we'll come back and try it another day, I think. Let's go in for Via Napoli. I'm, I'm just, I'm feeling like it today. Ah, pizza, yum. We made it, it's so hard to resist. I can't resist it, I can't, I can't. And then we got the uh, touchless menu right there using the QR codes. They don't even have the paper here. They're using these, uh, it's like permanent QR codes. I really like that idea. The one we had last time, the uh, Quattro Fromage, I believe that's how you pronounce it, was amazing. Absolutely amazing, but I wanna try something new. Wait a minute, I'm, I'm forgetting which one we had last time. Just looked it up, last time we had the San Janeiro pizza, and that was super, super good. We're gonna try one of the new ones today. I, I really wanna try another one of these pizzas. I think I'm gonna go for the Picante pizza. That sounds amazing, with tomato sauce, mozzarella, Italian spicy sausage, and it's an individual, so individual sized pizza serves one, for $24, good to know. Or get the large for 38, and then maybe bring some back for David. You know what, I think that might make more sense to get the larger one and just bring some back in a box. I, I like that idea. Just spoke to my server. She said the picante pizza is a little spicy, but she, think, she thinks I'll like it, so that'll be good. I went ahead and got the larger one, $38 for the larger one. It serves two to three. I will not be eating it all here, don't worry. It's just I'll bring some pieces home. David will love it. I'll have some later. It'll be great. Vienna Napoli themed amazingly well. I love it. You can see all those details from Italy. The walls painted so, so nice. And I love the uh, the three mouths in the back, kind of have those ovens roaring away. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, so I ordered the large. I did not order this size. Apparently the, they made a mistake in the back, so they said, oh, it's, it's on us. It's, okay, we're gonna have pizza for a few weeks. Yeah, that's great, that's fine. The totally, I'm gonna, we're gonna enjoy it. Every last bite, we are going to enjoy pizza picante. I'm gonna bring this back home and David's gonna be like jumping up and down. He's like, oh my gosh, you got all the pizza. <laughs> it's so big. Oh my gosh, okay. All right, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna try some. It's gonna be great. We're gonna, we're gonna try a few pieces here, but this is meant for like 10 people, I'm telling you. I'm sure people are like looking at me as I'm eating this being like, oh my gosh, Michael, what? No, 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 don't worry. We're not gonna eat it all today. I promise, I promise. Trying the pizza picante from Via Napoli together. You ready? Here we go. First few bites here, not bad, not bad at all. I love the spicy sausage. That That's so good, that's so good, good, so good. However, I do prefer the San Gennaro pizza. That one was like mind-blowingly good. This is still good, love the spice to it. Great flavor there, I love that. But San Gennaro is the one I would definitely get in the future. That being said, still really like this. Now many very kind friends have suggested that we find a way to kind of keep track of all the different items that we've tried all around Disney so that we can use a you know, reference guide so I know exactly what we've tried before. I just created one here on my phone, so we'll be able to keep track as we go through these different meals together. For me personally, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go with like an A to F grading system. I'm gonna give this one a B, maybe a B minus in terms of food. Not bad, not bad at all. But the problem is you compare it to the, uh, which was, I already wrote it down, San Gennaro, the pizza San Gennaro here at Via Napoli, which gets an A plus in my opinion. Inside the restaurant now, per the Italian style, they're singing the song over the speakers, Santa Lucia. How do I know the song, Santa Lucia? Hogan's Heroes. Well, we had a few pieces here, but I didn't do much of a dent. 
like three pieces on the end of this humongous pizza right there. Plenty of coming home and uh, I'm gonna share it with David too. There is so much leftover pizza that they didn't give me one, they brought me two, two boxes. This is amazing. Oh my gosh, okay, so it's magical moments. Lifting them out of the pan with just the uh, spatula and fork there. I was hoping to just use one box, but there's no way I need to use the second box. David and I have pizza here for a week, I'm telling you. Delicious meal at Via Napoli and a little parting gift. Let's make our way. As we exit Via Napoli, we have the opportunity to sanitize right there. Kind of on our way out, we were told to exit in this direction. Oh, that was wonderful. I'm glad we picked Via Napoli. This is why I have those clips everywhere. Clipped it right to my bag there. Two hands. Yay, two hands. Now, I just heard the announcement that Mariachi Combre, which is the mariachi band by uh, Mexico, is actually playing here at the, Mar at the American Gardens Theater. So if you want to see them during this time, this is where you want to uh, stop by. I love having kind of the shade while you see them. So they're really great. So are the uh, Jammers. Mariachi Combre sounds amazing. Let's go check them out for a few minutes. Yeah! Oh, that's a classic tune right there from Coco. Gotta appreciate it. They're, they're, they're in it for the favorites. Let me tell you. Walking by Morocco now, love the sense, the incense there, it's great. You can see there are cast members walking around with those signs. We've seen them before saying, you know, keep that social distancing, keep those masks on. And if they see anyone who's maybe taken off a mask, you know, forgot to put it back on after eating or drinking, they just remind them politely to put it back on. It's no problem. Back at Canada now, and I'm actually planning on going by mouse gear, looking for some new masks that apparently they have all throughout Walt Disney World. I'm inside the Port of Entry store right now, and I'm seeing the same masks that we've seen before. No new ones here, probably Magic Kingdom would have all the new ones. I'm slowly getting used to the new mouse gear location. It's taking me a little while to get used to it. I'm so used to the, the original location. But we'll get a new one again soon. Found them. Bunch of new masks here at Mouse Gear. You've got kind of the uh, tie-dye Mickey starting off right there. Then below, we've got the purple together again. Wow, <laughs> they've got all the sizes and even an extra large size. Take a look. They finally brought the extra large sizes to the parks. I love that. And then together again right there, the pink ones with the, uh, the castle in the middle. These are all so, so great. And I'm so glad to see the XL has come to the park. Yay! We saw the Donald earlier, but take a look at the Anna and Elsa masks right there. It looks like the XL is only sold for certain masks. Not all of them, or at least maybe not all of them have the XL here, but all sorts of new styles here today. So I've looked over a lot of these masks right now, and the only XL size that I've found thus far is this blue together again mask right there. The other ones I'm only seeing larges. I'm gonna ask a cast member just to be sure. It's good to know. Of all the new masks here, one of my favorites, Donald Duck, the other one. I really do like this bluish purple together again. I really, really do. It, it, it's a great one, no doubt about it. Great day here at Epcot. Loved it all, seeing those countries in detail, and I've got so much pizza, so, so much pizza for another day. Thank you so much for being a part of the magic with me today. It was so much fun sharing it all with you. Until next time, have a magical day. Yeah.